another little one. Hi, no, sorry, he's very frightened, very, very, he's been really getting bitten as well. He's, he's only a baby. Poor little thing, but his little ears, you can see, when guinea pigs are fighting, they'll take chunks out of each other. That's what's happened here. Again, it's you need to do an antifungal wash. Yep. On him. There it is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, give them a little wipe out. He's only little. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Where they do have injuries, again, because there's blood involved or, you know, sores with scabs, it's the perfect area for that to become infected or for um, moisture to accumulate. So I'm just going to wipe it out. His ears aren't too bad, but we're just going to cover that for him. Hello, little one. Now, all these piggies, of course, are being treated with um, ivermectin at the moment. Sorry, little guy. I'm sorry, I know. I'm just going backwards out there. I just need to wipe that. I know, you had a clump of stuff there. Hello. It's okay. It's alright. He says, What are you doing in my ear? Okay, we're good. Hello. Little girl. Hello, sweetie pie. Yeah. She does have a name. I'm just. Forgotten. Thinking what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's. Is she the same rescue? Or? She's part of the big group of thirteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll check. When we get white ones in, we've always got to be careful about sight issues. Um, whether they're a potential lethal that doesn't have many deformities. Quite often they have uh, mouth issues, jaw issues, teeth issues. Um, they can have bone differences. Her behaviour, I think she's fine with sight, but we'll put her down and we'll see shortly. And that's also, testing of sight is quite tricky in the sense that they can have a reaction to light and dark, but how much visually they can see could be very different. So you can't just make an assumption that um, it's just a sight issue. The ears are not too bad. Yeah. This was one of the girls when she came in. There was quite decent sized air bubble inside of her actual intestines. Mm -hmm. She had quite an she upset gut. Yeah. yeah. And call that bloat. I don't know, she has got fungal boundaries. All these white flaky bits. She needs to have an antifungal bath. Yep. And you need to, any bathing that you do with the guinea pig, you really need to make sure that they completely dry off. And you also need to give them a, a heat source just in case. Because, you know, when you have like a shower, you can be dry, but you can still feel cold from the air around you. So just to have that heat source there to help with thermoregulating is really important. And loads of little bits of flaky white bits in her ears. Just giving a bit of a 
a bit of a clean, just lots of ear nips. Okay. Let's see what ear. Again, looking at ears, if you look in there, can you get that? If you look from my angle down in that way, can you see down inside that ear? You can see how much in the way of white flaky skin is there. We're just going to remove that out. Again, fungal spores, she definitely has to be bathed because they would be, um, you know, fungal spores in her coat, around her feet. And wherever she scratches, she's going to transmit that to. And if their immunity plummets for any reason or conditions get worse, with moisture then fungal and mites both really take hold so much more so much faster so you've probably got these girls just in time Probably pregnant too, yeah? Definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna do her ears. She's had a bit of fungal, so she was without hair down the back. Yeah, right? she had a completely bald strip so all the way down really her spine out. and it was spreading down her sides as well. Oh, poor little girl. Okay, so she had a bit of a head tilt, you said, which has come good. Yep. She was the one in the carrier that had a head on a bit of an angle. So, but she's. It's understandable, so she'll need some more, um, she needs a fungal bath. Yep, easily so, done. Yeah. yeah, only the ears are a little bit tricky for me. <laughs> yeah. When you get a group of them, um, always bath, bath a lot regardless, because if fungal spores are on one, then, you know. It's, All's you gonna can, get it. Exactly, you're just better off eradicating all of it, doing your best to get on top of it, then you've got a baseline for where you're gonna move to. Even the ones that don't show signs are actually still harboring it. Yeah, exactly. So, she's got quite a bit in and around her ears. I'm just going to clean this up. Going across the hair actually helps when it's at the base of the hair. That's it. So make sure we've got you good. Okay. You can see what I mean by again harboring lots in there. Let's get that off. Cool. marks that she's had there it's, it's common with boys and girls people often say oh it's just boys but that's not not right at all you can have fighting with girls or between boys and girls yeah. these girls were living in a very overcrowded situation so that's a perfect scenario to fight for food and fight for space poor little things
Okay. The auction. We don't know. We don't know much about them, other than they're really terrified. Okay. When you've got panicked guinea pigs again, moving really slowly, making them feel secure at all times, and that you try and keep their feet always on the ground. So front paws, because you need to hold them, are on my hand, but rear paws always on the ground. pregnant yeah already they're only little very young separated from their mum they this is another added problem for their immunity to to then deal with so they don't know where that they are what what's going to happen to them who they're going to be with other guinea pigs other herd behaviors and yeah. even though we separate boys when they're relatively young we still keep them with their dad or in a similar environment so they've got the same people looking after them, the same food, they've got the same pattern. They realize that while they don't have their mum with them, they've still got an adult guinea pig, so they're not as frightened because they know they've got an older herd member there, whether that's, you know, dad or someone else. But um, yeah, so these are little girls. And again, three weeks old at the auction, so young, so little. Um, breeding is not necessary. We've got too many of, it, of them out there that need to find homes, so it's not something we need to worry about. They're not becoming extinct anytime soon. And certainly the ones that are there, um, you know, we repeatedly see this where people get into difficulty with breeding, the, the numbers, it gets out of hand, out of control, they don't know what they're doing. Just the level of time, you know, it takes to get on top of one little piggy is, um, quite time-consuming yeah. so there's just no need for it yeah. okay